morning. Um, my name is Shazia Khan and today's session is a learning outcome two for academic and research skills for business. Okay, so the last session we looked at learning outcome one, which was uh, to be able to assess your own academic skills. We also looked at uh, things like personal skills, which was uh, hard, hard, hard skills, which are teachable skills. And also we looked at soft skills, which are people skills, things like your communication, your character, your personality. So we looked at things like that. We also then looked at um, the SWOT analysis, which was um, strengths, weakness, opportunities and threats and went through it for yourself in regards to what uh, some gave you some examples around the SWOT analysis and also looked at the template that you would be using for your assignment. We then went on to look at the SMART um ideology which was specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound and we looked at this and also gave you examples in regard to the smart process that businesses can use outside to identify any sort of loopholes or any sort of um you know what is achievable the time limit they frame on themselves and something in regards to yourself as well what is achievable if you set yourself a goal and at the end for example going to the gym in the next month you will achieve losing four pounds we went through examples like that we also looked at personal development um um pdp personal development plan and also gave you a template for personal development plan in regards to what you would be using for your assignment now we are going on to uh, learning outcome two which is um to know how to research information using primary and secondary um methods so firstly, we'll go on to what is research. So research is a disciplined attempt to address questions or solve problems through the collection and analysis of primary data for the purpose of description, explanation, generalization and prediction. And that was in uh, Anderson 1998, page six. The nature of subject matter determines what kind of research is valid or relevant in Pring 2000, page six and the reasoning deductive Aristotle formal steps of logic, inductive, which was Bacon, empirical evidence for verification, and inductive, did, uh, inductive deductive moving from observations to hypothesis, then back to implication, backwards and forwards. And we looked at subjective belief must be checked against objective reality, reality so research is self-correcting. So what is distinctive about educational research? The distancing of theory from practice is associated with public and policy scepticism about value um, of educational research. Need for clarity in defining key terms identified from your literature review as used in your study. Good, effective, competent teacher, what it means to be an educated person need to attend the logic of discourse, the rules implicit in the use of particular words and those to which they are logically related. For Dowie, he said that educational concern, the development of distinctively human capacities of knowing, understanding, judging, behaving intelligently, and that was from Pring 2000, page 12. What that makes you study distinctive in relation to the field of education. Key features of educational research. The attempt to make sense of the activities, policies, and institutions, which through the organization of learning help to transform the capacities of people to live a fuller and more distinctive human life. The distinctive focus of educational research must be upon the quality of learning and thereby teaching. So you learn through teaching, you learn through educational research, you learn through researching uh, products, you learn through researching um, any sort of uh, journal articles, anything to get some sort of uh, research skills for yourself. Much writing sets up a false dichotomy between different research traditions. Variety in approaches to educational research is desirable, depending on questions explored and physiological position. 
Is it the real world that we observe or interpret through my own personal and a subjective scheme of things? What is the connection between language and the word language is used to describe after Pring 2000? So all links to notion of clarity in writing and argument and demonstrating critical engagement with substantive, theoretical and methodological literature. What is a research design? So a research design, um, as stated by Blake in Designing Social Research, page 15, is an interrogated, integrated statement of and justification for the technical de decisions involved in planning a research project. A research project is a temporary organisation that is created with the purpose excuse me, the purpose of systematic and rigorous inquiry to address a particular problem arising from a gap in the knowledge. So a theoretical puzzle, a pragmatic need. Features of quality in education research, rigor of research process, trustworthiness, whether the, the, the work is trustworthy, reliability and validity and you need to check whether the research your research is valid and reliable for you to use usefulness implications for research methodology for policy and practice in education originality and then contribution to th theory so how can you demonstrate rigor in these areas in your study so what is the philosophy of educational research a secondary order activity which explores the beliefs about the nature of social reality or a phenomenon including self and other, what exists, what it looks like, what units it makes up and how these units interact with each other. That's an ontology. And then the next one is the beliefs about the nature of educational research knowledge and its relationship to other kinds of knowledge, epistemology. And then the beliefs of um, the beliefs about principles and values, including the right, the the good, the virtues in practice of educational uh, research, is the axology. And that is uh, by D. Bridges. 2003 and it's page 15 and n blake 2000 page 8 then we move on to the next one which is what is our analogical position beliefs about epistemology and um, positive positivist constructivism post positivist pragmatic and critical critical theory. How does this affect your choice of research aims and methods, research design and methodology, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed methods? So quantitative versus qualitative. So some researchers have argued that it may be appropriate to think of a qualitative and quantitative as being a continu continuum, um, Gray and Denston, 1998, and Tashkari and Tedley, 2003. Uh, qualitative and quantitative choices viewed as polar op opposites may be viewed as false dualism, as Fraser said in 1995. Can you and um, clarify and justify your own view and approach in study? How has your view evolved over the course of your PhD research? So these are some examples. Pragt pragmatism as the foundation for MM research. Pragmatism supports the use of qualitative and quantitative methods in the same study and rejects the either or incompatibility thesis. It considers the research questions to be more important than either the method of paradigm that underlies the method, the dictatorship of RQ. Pragmatism, it avoids the use of metaphysical concepts such as truth and reality. 
Pragmatism presents a very practical and applied philosophy, as Tasha Corey and Tedley's 2003, page 20 to 21, stated. Research questions. The big research question, uh, one overarching question, the sub questions which help to uh, guide your inquiry. Characteristics of good research questions. So you've got clarity, empirical focus, accessible evidence, manageable awareness of uh, assumptions, awareness of implicit values, awareness of political implications related to previous research, significant ethical, practical use, relevant, fun and interesting to you. Clarity. The question in your study should be answerable, can be illuminated or addressed by your methodology. You are looking to find the answer to a genuine question. The question should be intelligible to the reader who may not be an expert in your topic, which is understandable. The questions should offer the prospect of making an original contribution to knowledge in some way, methodologically, theoretically, empirically. Are the terms clearly defined and are the questions precise? So we look at empirical focus. This requires that you generate data to answer questions. You lead you, lead you to determine methods of inquiry and data collection. Uh, it is usually most appropriate for methods to follow questions. Different types of questions will lead to different approaches to research and methods of data collection, but this is not always the case as in uh, the source was Ingrid Lunt. Reflect on your own research aims um, and how they have evolved over, over the course of your study, how far they have driven your choice and design of methodology and specific methods you are using. Significant, is there a clear rationale for the question? So what does this question matter? And why is it of interest to and to whom, Ingrid Lunt? Possible aims and objectives. Description. So what does it look like? What, when, where, who? The four W's. Explanation. What, why did it happen? Prediction. What is, is to be expected? Understanding how it, is it grasped in human experience? Interpretation, what does it mean? Prescription, how ought it be? Change and emphasization, how can it be transformed for the better? And critique and disruption, what are the limitations and hidden assumptions? How can these assumptions be challenged and interrupted? For example, exploration, demonstration, classification. And you've got the aims and the claims, um, aims and claims, kinds of research question and examples of research. So we'll just go through this diagram. So the first one is explanatory. And then the kind of research question is what is the relationship between the examples of research surveys and experiments. Then we've got explanatory, descriptive, prescriptive. And the kind of question, research question is what happens if and the research we'll be using the examples is experiments, participatory research, and action research. Then we've got descriptive explanatory, what and why. And the examples of research is mixed message, mixed methods research. The next one is explanatory descriptive, which is what happened in the past, how to make sense of it. And the research you use is historical research. Then you've got Understanding inter, interpre, interpretive. How can we understand a situation? Um, enthographic and imperative uh, case study. And then the next one is critical critique and participatory. How to disrupt convention and power participants. And the research uses critical approaches. So this diagram identifies what research, what kind of aims and claims and examples of research we would use.
then we've got the social influences on social influences on social research. So you have values and you have practical considerations. The values would be these can um, affect choice of research topic, formulation of research questions, choice of methods, choice of research design and instruments, ethics, sample and process of data collection, interpretation of data and findings, conclusions, reporting and dissemination. And it needs to be self-reflective and to exhibit reflexility um, about the part played by the researchers own values and their potential influence on research process and outcome. We look at now the practical considerations which are existing knowledge based on topic. Is this a new topic of interest? Generation or testing of theory, more appropriate. Look at the resources available. Interests of participants. All social research is coming together of ideal and feasible. And this is by Alice Okania. Then we look at the roles and values of researchers. The value determined, um, the value determined nature of inquiring anti-positive, positivist research such as critical theory and constructivism is advocacy and activism encourage researcher, transformative intellectual or passionate participant. What can be known is mediated by interaction between investigator and subject of investigation. For constructivist, there are multiple realities that depend on the individuals or groups holding constructions. Constructions may change, be altered, and thus so can realities. Researcher and subject are interactively linked and findings are created through uh, hermeneutics and dialectical techniques and are relative. Aims to critique and tr transform critical theory or to understand and reconstruct subject to continuous uh, revisions. How values may influence social research. Choice of research area, formulation of research questions, choice of method, formulation of research design and data collection techniques, implementation of data collection, interpretation of data and conclusions are drawn. Bodies of knowledge, theories, propositions and explanations accumulated through inquiry, criticism, argument and counter argument. What has survived testing and criticism public pro property, their credentials depend upon their being open to public challenge and refutation. Anybody of knowledge can be provisional and is open to further challenge through criticism. The link between knowledge and certainty is broken. Disciplined, critical and reflective thinking is the mark of educational research at odds with unquestioning common sense beliefs. Points to establish in examining research approaches and in critical reading of research. Research assumptions, are they explicit? The aims, explanation or understanding, the subjective objective dimension, the role and definitions of theory, Doing research, reading, research, theoretical and empirical domains, values and interpretation, use of findings, the audience and stages in the development of inquiry. Issues in qualitative research. You have generalizability, generalizability, validity and real, reliability. So if we look at the first one, generalizability, it's enriching, understanding, and generating theory. So fuzzy generalizations, falsifications, using extreme, most least likely to fit theory, up typical and critical cases. Validity often concerns honest, honesty, credibility, richness, authenticity, depth, scope, subjectivity, strength of feeling capturing 
uniqueness, ideo ideographic statements, fidelity to participants' accounts, and then reliability is dependability, consistency, comprehensiveness, checkability, empathy, uniqueness, expl explanatory and descriptive, potential, confirmity, neurality, applicability and transfer transferability. And that's by Alice Onkishi. Strategies for generalizability is careful sometimes strategy selection of cases, intense participation and effort to develop valid and rich descriptions and challenging theories, conventional uh, wisdom and prior assumptions, and letting the case talk back, sensitivity to diversity, uniqueness, history and context. And the reliability is good preparation for fieldwork, piloting and peer and participant debriefing, justification of decision, for example, transcription, recording types of questions, extent of mapping and summarizing in case presentation, awareness of transcriber selectivity and other limitations, and independent uh, audits and audit trails and multiple orders. Strategies for validity. So we've got prolonged engagement in the field, persistent observation, rich and thick description, leaving an audit trail, reflexive diaries, respondent valid, validation, validation, peer debriefing, checking for research effects, making contrast and comparison, ruling out spurious relations, following up surprises, using extreme cases, assessing rival explanations, uh, triangulation and back translation. Again by Alice Onkelia. Sub-issues in quantitative research, so generalizability, validity, and reliability. And the first one is, can findings in generalizability, can findings be generalized outside the sample? Importance of sample, the concept of statistical probability. Validity is the measure, measure validity, face validity, concurrent validity, predictive um, the validity, the validity, construct validity and convergent validity, and then role of confidence inter intervals. Then we've got reliability, which is fundamentally concerned with the reliability of measures, stability, dependability, um, rep replicability, internal reliability and inter-observer consistency. Strategies for generalize generalizability. Validity and reliability. So we'll go through generalizability first. Careful sample selection. Random selection can be useful because of known properties. Be cautious with marking in inferences. Um, validity is appropriate instrumentation, appropriate treatment of statistical data. Careful sampling. At best, strive to minimize invalidity and maximize validity. And the reliability is test, retest, Chrome back alpha, multiple coders, consider the consistency of your observations, controllable, predictable, consistent, and replic replicable, Cohen et al. 2007, mixed methods approaches. So we've got issues and strategies. The first we'll go through the issues, which is at all the same problems as the quantitative and qualitative, but also design choice, data syn synthesis, can the data inform one another? Two separate studies. Quantitative and qualitative findings don't match. Uh, skill and confidence in both research approaches and should be more than the sum of its parts. The strategies are careful design of each, so the quantitative and qualitative approach component. Think about how your data might be used to inform one another. Explore what the combined set of findings indicate and if not confident with a particular method, hit the books for help. A dynamic conceptual model uh, for MM research. Quantitative research is sphere of concepts, abstract operations and purposes. So mixed method, qualitative. So deductive questions, in deductive questions for qualitative. 
objective purpose for quantitative and then subjective purpose for qualitative, value neutral for quantitative and value informed for qualitative, politically neutral for quantitative and transformative for qualitative. The experiential sphere, which is concrete observations and operations data, um, observation, numerical data for qualitative and structural uh, and uh, narrative data for uh, quant qualitative, structural process for quantitative and emergent process for qualitative, statistical analysis for quantitative, content analysis for qualitative, sphere of influence, abstract explanations and understanding theories and explanations. So for qualitative is deductive logic, and for quantitative inductive logic, objective in inference, subjective inference, value neutral, value involved, policy neutral and transformative. And these are by Tash Tasha Corey and Ted Lee 2003. MM designs categorize. So multiple uh, positions along with along uh, each attribute traditionally assumed to distinguish quantitative and qualitative research. And for example, there have been both confirmatory and exploratory research questions. They are near the end of one continuum on one, on one attribute, e.g. inductive questions, and put near the other end of continuum to another attribute, e.g. statistical uh, analysis. Multiple method designs, more than one method or more than one worldview, A is multiple method designs, more than one method but restricted to within one worldview, for example, quantitative, quantitative or qualitative, qualitative. B, mixed methods design use of qualitative and quantitative research. So mixed method research occurs in method stage of a study. Uh, mixed model research can occur in all stages of the study. MM uh, designs categorized by multiple positions along with each attribute traditional uh, traditionally assumed to distinguish quantitative and qualitative research e.g they're both confirmatory and exploit exploitary research questions uh, they are near the end of one continuum or one attribute inductive questions but near the other end of the continuum on other attribute e.g statistical statistical uh, analysis as stated earlier. The first one, multiple method designs, more than one or more than one worldview. Uh, A, multiple method designs, which I mentioned earlier, and mixed method designs. Mixed method designs occurs in the methods of the stage of study only. Mixed method model research can occur in all stages. And then you have concurrent mixed method design, one kind of question simultaneously addressed by collecting and analyzing um, quantitative and quantitative data. And then type one inference made from by sources. Concurrent mixed uh, model is two strands of research with both types of question, both types of data, and both types of analysis, then both types of inferences are pulled together to create meta inferences at the end. Then this diagram identifies the um, uh, mixed model design. Uh, so you've got the purpose, the question, the data collection, uh, the data analysis and the inferences. And then at the end, it comes together at meta inferences, which was explained earlier. Then you've got the um, the se uh, sequential mixed model, uh, which is the purpose of the question, then the data collection in both, and then data analysis, uh, inferences, and then meta inferences from the inference to the purpose question. Then we've got the fully integrated uh, mixed model, which is uh, purpose to purpose question, data collection, uh, collection to purpose question, data analysis to data collection, inference to data collection. And this then meta inference is at the bottom then. It becomes meta inference. So you, you your research will be informed by your readings, critical re reading of the literature is a major part of good research. 
And it's so important to have good research in any sort of business or your study. How to read research articles critically. An appreciation of strengths and weaknesses and limitations. So identify your research aims and questions. Identify the nature, the type of study. So scholarly research, um, review empirical work, new or secondary analysis. Uh, identify ontological position epistemological and methodological assumptions. Is the researcher's value pos position explicit? Identify location, date, sample, methods used. Examine the use of theory, deductive and inductive. Are the analysis methods clearly explained? Are conclusions appropriately supported by evidence? So is there evidence to support what you're saying? Or is there evidence when you're researching to support what the academic is saying to identify if anything is true or not? What are the implications for the policy and practice? Final comments. No study can be perfect. Research rigor is about clarity of research process throughout justifying your choices, design, interpretations, conclusions, persuasion of arguments, for example, uh, your original contribution, and awareness of strengths and limitations, how your research fits into existing body of knowledge, implications for policy practice, future directions for research. Your viva involves an aura of defence, a justification of the rigour of your research to probe your understanding and ownership of your study. It is helpful to practice thinking uh, about and talking about the pres you know, about presenting your study with attention to demonstrating rigour. So we finished the session today, which is learning outcome two, um, and uh, the next session is learning outcome three. So um, I will see you for learning outcome three and please refer to Moodle for any sort of resources or additional reading that you need to get. So I will see you uh, for your next session learning outcome three. Thank you.